Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online Sunday church service. I hope you all had a good week. So I just want to make two announcements here. Firstly, during this pandemic, we are thankful that as a church, we are able to extend Christ's love to the communities around us. We were able to distribute food aids to the needy through, generous, through the generous donation of church members. Many of you have given either in cash or have contributed foodstuffs. A big thank you to all of you who have given generously towards this cause. The Lord bless you as you have blessed others. Secondly, to all the SIB Likas members, as a church, we want to make sure that every church member is cared for. If you know of church members who need food aids, please call the church office. If you are going through difficulties and need prayer support or need someone to talk to, please feel free to call the church office. So I just want to share uh, very briefly a word of encouragement taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This verse tells us to have high expectation for a new beginning from God. God has good plans for our lives and He wants to do new things in us and to us. God wants to lead us into new beginnings, but we must let go of the old ways of living and thinking that are not in line with God's ways. To expect new things from God, we need to let go of the past. We cannot keep dwelling on the negative things that happened in the past. We cannot keep dwelling on past failures. When we dwell on the past, we will not be able to see what God is doing in the present. In this verse, God says, I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When we face a roadblock situation and we don't know what to do, we do what we can and trust God to do what we cannot do. Expect God in His wisdom to do a new thing in that situation. So let us take courage from these verses and look to God and believe God for a glorious new beginning that God has in store for us. Let us uh, spend this short time in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercies. Thank you for your great love that you died on the cross to take away our sins. Thank you that through your death on the cross, we can experience new life in Christ. Thank you that we can experience new life in each new day. Lord, we commit our service to you. I pray for Pastor Brandon as he shares the word this morning. Pray that by your spirit, you will open our heart, you will soften our heart to receive what the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
shouting praises louder and louder. You are holy. All love declares you reign. For your glory is all that will remain. You are mighty. All else will fade away. God forever will lifting up your name. There is a new song rising up. We will shout the highest praise. There is a new song rising up. All together we sing. Our hands we raise now. With one voice we sing out. We're shouting praises louder and louder. Our feet they dance now. And we want. We cry out, they're shouting praises louder and loud. Our hands, our hands we raise now. When close we sing out, we're shouting praises louder and louder. Our feet they dance now. We one heart we cry. We will stand and shout it from the highest mountain. We will make it louder. You have overcome. We will not be silent. We rejoice in triumph. We will make it louder. The victory is won. We will stand and shout it. From the highest mountain, we will make it louder. You have overcome. We will not be silent. We rejoice in triumph. We will make it louder. The victory is won. We will stand and shout it. From the
In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit Three in one God of glory Majesty Praise forever to the King of Kings To reveal the kingdom coming And to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing that was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me
of kings praise forever to the king of kings praise forever to the king of kings good morning i hope everyone is doing fine and i'm sure that uh with the covid 19 uh, we must be very careful and be vigilant in what we are doing because it's quite dangerous outside, especially uh, in Sabah now, the uh, cases are going up. But anyway, today I want to share with you something that the Lord had put into my heart and I hope that we can uh, come together and learn together. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this morning. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us and help us to understand your word so that we can be able to apply it into our lives and really understand uh, what you are trying to tell us about you and especially about Jesus. So thank you a lot for today and I ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen. I still remember um, there are many times when we were younger, we were asking about uh, who Jesus Christ is. And many people will say, well, Jesus is a man. Jesus is a God. And if you ask around, you know, especially nowadays in this 21st century, a lot of people will not be able to tell you who Jesus is. Some of them might say, well, Jesus, Jesus is from where? From America? They don't even know, right? So today we want to understand what we're trying to uh, understand about Jesus because we are following the course called the Alpha Course. And uh, today's topic is why did Jesus die. Why did Jesus die? When we were uh, about five years old, we went to Sunday school. We learned a lot of things. We learned about love. We learned about um, how to care for people, how to be kind to people, and who Jesus is and all that. Well, I think when we were younger, we didn't really know what was the teacher talking about, right? We have no idea. Well, we just follow. Jesus loves you. So we love Jesus. Who is he? Don't know, you know. So we kind of like have that kind of uh, community where we grew up and uh, that's how we uh, got involved because for myself, uh, we grew up in a so-called Christian family and uh, that's how we will go to church. And in our youth time, we either go to church, to fellowship, Friday night fellowship, or we people will go for um, entertainment with they are friends and normally they are gangsters. You know, the small community gangsters, they want to be macho and therefore they uh, will uh, join the gang. So there's not much places to go at that time. And so we will join either the fellowship or a certain group. Sometimes when we meet problems, we will, you know, ask God, why? Why God? Why? You know, we, we don't know why. And, and, and we are looking at you know, I remember, I still I still remember I was looking at the, the, the ceiling, you know, when I was distressed, frustrated, angry. I was looking at the, uh, the, the ceiling and I said, you know, God, where are you? You know, and and I'm looking at the, the ceiling for a long time. Why? Because I'm hoping that there will be an angel coming down and, hello, how are you, my son? You know, that kind of thing never happened. Never happened, you know. Those were the days. We were curious, isn't it? So when I was in my teens, about maybe 14, 15, 16 years old, um, I already was asking, what is life? The philosophy of life. So I tried to disseminate in my mind how to understand uh, about life. Why, why, why is there so many sufferings? We want answers, you know, in our teens. Some are more mature. And for people who are struggling, especially, they're more mature in their thinking because they think a lot. You know, think of why this, why that. So we want answers. Where is God when I need you? Where are you? Are you is there really a God? Is He a good God? Why are we suffering? Why are we, there are so many people suffering? Uh, um, why is the world filled with so many bad people? You know, some of you still remember someone scratch your car? Well, what are you going to do with it? You want justice, right? 
someone stole your pen. You want justice. I want to know who stole my pen, you know, things like that. So we are filled with so much problem, so much struggle. You know, there's so many bad people around us. Today, there are even more, many, many more bad people. Even for myself, I'm bad. You are bad. We are all bad. I have done things that I regretted. I've, I've spoken words that I've regretted because it hurt people. Things that we have done, we have hurt people. We hurt our family members. We hurt our siblings and, and all that. We, we hurt our parents, hurt our grandparents, all that. And, and, and we are behaving like that kind. And, and at that time when we were in our teens, we were asking questions nonstop. You know, what is going on? Why are we behaving like this? Why is there so much trouble on this earth? Even today, when you look at it, you look at the news, every, every picture, every comment, uh, basically uh, are so negative. Yeah. So what is going on in this world? What is happening? Now today, as we go through the series of our course, and today's the topic again is why did Jesus die? I want to share with you today uh, something a bit different from my usual. Uh, I want to study a word and I hope that you can learn from it and uh, we can uh, understand more fully about why Jesus died. Because it's, it's so, so, so hard to kind of like get in touch with like, yeah, Jesus loves me and I know he loves me. Uh, he died because, uh, you know, so that we can go to heaven when we accept him. It's something like that. It's a very general thing. But today I hope to get something deeper than that so that we all can, can really appreciate what Jesus has done on the cross and at the same time what God's intention is and, and his seriousness about sin. And, and how he will look into that, right? So we will, we will look into this today. Now, if you still remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning, right? And the heavens and the earth, he is actually our creator. So he created the heavens and the earth. Now, mind you, God is not constrained or confined by space, time, or metal. He's outside space, time, and metal. Let me give you an example. Um, I built a car. So I created a car, I invented it, I put a lot of gadgets in the car so that when you drive, it will be fun, it will be smooth, and all that. So I created it. But you see, I am not in that car. I am not in that car, I am outside that car. That is my creation. So for God, creation, he did. And he is outside creation. This is the God that I am believing. And this is the, uh, the God that the Bible is talking about. I believe my God is, is a great God. It's an almighty God. He creates things and it's outside that creation, right? He is not confined by space, time or metal. He is a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a just God. And He is also a loving God. And that's why He created human beings, Adam and Eve. He created them. Why? Because He wants to have fun with them. He wants to talk to them. He wants to, you know, walk with them in the garden and all that. He, he likes it because He is a loving, loving, loving God. That's why He created it. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 15 to 17. Let me read to you. The Bible says, The Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. So even in the beginning, God already had a plan for human beings to work. So that's why we work. Even today we work. But the only difference is that, that after the fall, we work and we get tired. I believe before that, um, when Adam worked on the field, uh, uh, on the field and plucked the fruits and, and whatnot and eat, and I don't think he was tired. He was tired, right? He he was just enjoying himself before the fall. So God put them in the Garden of Eden to work, and not only that, to take care of it. So we have to take care of what God has given us too, isn't it? The principle of God never changes. 
It's there. Okay? Now, in verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now, I want you to focus on die. Okay? You will certainly die. Now, this is the word die in the original is called mut, M-U-T. Okay? And here in verse 17, there are two mentions about death. Okay? Two times. Die, you will die in the original. So the syntax here, I like to explain to you a little bit. Die here in the beginning is the, the tense is call infinitive absolute. That's the tense. What does it mean? It means that there's a special emphasis on a certain thing. And here, God is emphasizing on a certain thing. There's no doubt exist. It's right there. It's absolute that you will die. Okay? If you were to eat of that fruit, then you will die. You will surely die. I can tell you. So God is emphasizing, hello, hello, make sure, Adam, you do not eat. If you were to eat it, you will and must die. It's absolute. There's no 100% error. It's 100, 100% correct. There's no doubt exists in this emphasis. So that's called infinitive absolute. Okay? And die, you will die. What is you will die? Matut. Okay? Uh, tamut. Sorry. Uh, tamut is, in this tense, is called imperfect second person's masculine. What is imperfect tense? You know. In Hebrew, kao imperfect, second person masculine, here means that something is happening, but is not yet finished. It's not yet completed. Okay? Something is happening, but it's not yet completed. Let me give you an example. I was eating my noodles when the doorbell rang. Okay? I was eating my noodle when the doorbell rang. So basically, this imperfect tense says that I am eating my noodles and while I'm eating, I have not finished yet, the doorbell rang. So here, die, you will die. It means that when God says, if you were to eat of it, you will die. So when you die, you will continue to die until, one, until you are finished, you are completed until you die, until you are separated. So something is happening, but it's not yet completed, not yet finished. So dying, you will die. So in other words, here you can see there are two deaths. The one death is basically a separation from God. The second one is that you will die. You will be dying until completion, which is our physical dying. So, so, so when Adam sinned against God, Something happened in the spiritual. He died. But he, he was still living. He was still living. But he died at a good old age, isn't it? Okay, so this is the syntax. This is the meaning of this word die. Now, let, let me open up a bit. Now, what is the meaning of mut? Now, in Brown Driver's Bricks, the lexicon Hebrew Bible, uh, uh, lexicon, uh, the dictionary, there are two meanings of mut, of death or die. Number one is the natural death. People die, it's natural. Number two is die as a penalty. So when here, uh, BDB, Brown Driver Brick says that there are four meanings in it in the Bible. There's number one is to put to death by human authority. That's basically capital punishment. Number two is inflicted by God. Number three is perish of a nation by divine judgment. So in other words, a nation can be judged. A nation can perish. Like in Amos chapter 2 verse 2, the whole nation perished. Okay. And number four, uh, the meaning of die as a penalty is that you die prematurely due to unwise moral conduct. 
I've talked about it a few uh, weeks ago about why uh, did God allow good people to die, isn't it? So in Ecclesiastes 7, 17, uh, King Solomon had mentioned about this. You die prematurely. If you take drugs, you know, it destroys your body, right? You die. Uh, if you drink a lot of alcohol and it affects your kidney, it affects your liver, your liver becomes hardened, and when it's hardened, you can die prematurely. Okay, but if you take care of your body, uh, you can live according to what God has purposed for you. Okay, so these are the meanings. There are two, two meanings, natural death and die as a penalty. Now, I want to talk about the first two. I open up again on the first two, okay? Now, die as a penalty where we put to death by human authority. That is capital punishment, okay? In Exodus chapter 21, verse 12, 15, 16, and 17, uh, these are some personal injuries whereby God had told Moses, and these are the laws that they have to obey. And uh, we will see some of the Examples where God had mentioned about putting people to death, capital punishment. For example, in verse 12, anyone who strikes a person with a fatal blow is to be put to death. See, if you strike a person with a fatal blow, you use some heavy things to hit that person, right? You can be put to death. These are the, the, the severity of punishment. Uh, in this human authority. Verse 13, however, if it is not done intentionally, but God lets it happen, they are to flee to a place I will designate. Nah. So in other words, um, that person can flee. Okay. If it is done unintentionally. Okay. In verse 14, if any one schemes and kills someone deliberately, that person is to be taken from my altar and be put to death. So if you kill somebody, okay, you will be put to death. That's capital punishment. So the, the, the laws there prevent you from killing people. If you do, you will be put to death. It's severe. It's, it's serious. This kind of... of, of, of um, deliberate act. Now in verse uh, 15, anyone who attacks their father or mother is to put to death. Oh, you attack your father, mother, you will be put to death at that time. So severe. Verse 16, anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death, whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kidnapper's possession. Put to death. Serious, you do not kidnap people and run away from it. You will be put to death. Very serious. In Sabah, when we kidnap people, we receive money. Hmm. Okay. Okay, in verse 17 here again. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. So when they curse their mother or their parents, Death penalty. Severe. Very severe. You know, talking about obeying our parents' filial piety, the Bible also says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, you look at it, you know, do you want to live long life? Obey your parents. Honor your father and mother, for this is right, the Bible says. You do that. I believe it because by doing so, you can live long life. Yeah. So in our times, not long, you know, some 40, 50, 50 years ago, 40, 40 years ago, uh, even when we are right at that time, we cannot talk back to our fathers. Keep quiet. In my heart, it, I am right one. It's wrong. Why can't I say anything? Cannot. Today, if your father say wrong, your children will hit you hard, isn't it? So there is the two extremes in that sense. 
whereby today, nowadays, young people, they don't respect parents. A lot of them, they think they know everything. And they can write on your head. And this is not right. Because God has created the father, mother, children. It's not children, mother, father, no. The way we look at it is what the Bible had taught, is that we honour our parents. Honour our father and mother. Say nice things to them, even though they might be foolish, you know, even though they might not be able to think well. And nowadays, young people, 14, 15 years old, they are like that when they do something, you know, in their handphones, in their notebook and, and internet. They are very fast, you know. They know exactly what is happening. For, for us, we look at the phone and say, how to press, huh? Where are you wrong already? You know? So when you ask your children to ask, you know, ask your children to help them, hi ya, why are you so stupid? <laughs> Don't do that. Because it's not honoring God. Be kind to your parents. Right? You see here, if this obeying, uh, if this obeying parents can put you and me to death, just imagine God. What about disobeying God? When God says that Adam, you don't eat that fruit. I am very serious with it. I emphasize it again. I have told you that if you were to eat that fruit, you will die. You will be cut off. You will be separated from me. And God did not want to see that happen because God loved him. And this is a, the, the crux of the matter here. And you know what happened? Something happened. Let's look into it. So before we go into it, let's go into the second meaning of die as a penalty. That is inflicted by God. Just now is, in, just, just now is um, it's capital punishment. Okay, human authority. Here, inflicted by God. God's judgment. Penalty, okay? Now in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, the Bible says here, very interesting. After God had created them, okay? Chapter 3, this is what happened. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did, you, uh, did God really say you must not eat from the, any tree in the garden? Verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Okay, just hold on. Verse 4, you will not surely die, or certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wow. Seriously. Verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and add it. She took some and add it. Okay, that's the verb. Action. It's an action verb. Took and add. Okay. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig, tree, uh, fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Look at this verse. What happened here in chapter 3 of Genesis? Death just happened. The crux of the matter, the problem that we face from Adam until now, okay, happened in verse 6. Of Genesis 
chapter 3. Okay, she took and ate it and gave it to the husband. Now nah, you eat it. Very nice. Huh? What is that? Eat and then ask. Habisla. How many times we cannot husband? Look at it, analyze us. You're the head of the house. We always make mistake. Always we are not the head of the house. We are the so and so of the house. So here, verse 6 is the crux of that matter. That because of verse 6, all hell broke loose. Today, we feel it. We can feel it. We feel that heat of evil. Verse 6 tells us that they were being destroyed. They were being condemned. They were being separated. That's why in verse 7, the Bible says that they hid themselves. They tried to, wow, naked, I, you know, go and find, you know, uh, what do you call that? Fig leaves. Fig leaves also. Here in Sabah, we uh, Ramputan leaves so small, but maybe um, uh, Tarap, the leaves are very big. One can cover already. Verse 6 talks about separation. And 7, they begin to realize it's already, it's kind of like you're injecting the COVID-19. Nothing happened. But a little bit, after a few hours, your arm is a bit painful. Then at night you sleep, so painful. Heat, fever is coming. That corruption is coming. The physical um, tiredness is coming. You can feel it. I was having my jab. The first jab was okay. The second jab, I can feel it. I was so tired and, and I had fever. And then, and, and I can't really sleep because it's painful. I can't turn it. And, and that kind of pain, you know, that's the jab. Well, you know what? Adam and Eve got the first jab. The first jab of death. That's why they were afraid. That's why they hid themselves, the Bible said. And they were naked. So, the physical corruption of the body, the pain, the sufferings brought about by the fall were the symptoms that eventually resulted in death and separation. This is how serious God already have told Adam to be careful because God is going to, to cut off that sin, that disobedience, that rebellion. God is going to cut off. He cannot tahan. He cannot stand sin. He cannot have fellowship. He cannot look at Adam and still be okay. He cannot. Because that is his nature. Because God is holy, righteous. From that point onwards, all creation began to change. The thorns were coming out. The rose changed shape with thorns at the side. Wherever you walk, you find that there's something not right. So things have began to deteriorate. The corruption of our body began. We can feel it. Adam can feel it at that time. And that's why they were naked. And that's why they were ashamed. That's why they were hid themselves from God. The punishment inflicted by God to this first couple took immediate effect. They can feel it. So what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, in these few verses, and especially Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, that is, die, you will die, happened once upon a time. And it's so severe, so severe that it affected us all. This is the problem that we are facing now. When Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, 
had done something that they would regret for the rest of their lives. And that is why the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse uh, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's why we can't go back to God anymore. There's no way we can go back to God because it's blocked. It's cut off. There's no breach to reach God anymore. No more. And that is why someone has to come and replace and take that death away. I got to take that death away. And that's why Jesus Christ has to take that death. How did he do it? He has to die for it. As God, he has to come and live among, among men, okay, and feel like man. The Bible says that he is both man and God, but without sin. He had to go through so that no one can point a finger at him and say, you don't understand me, human beings. He understands. And therefore, he had to come and die. Why? Because the punishment is death. You will die, Adam. You will die. And who can replace that death when there is the judgment? When God is so just that he said that he will do what he has said. I do not want to believe in a God when he said, okay, Adam, and if since you are the first couple, never mind, I can forgive you. Continue to live. If this is the kind of God that is written in the Bible and say God had forgiven, uh, what do you call, uh, Adam and Eve because of what he had done, then I felt that I don't think I want to believe in this God because he's so unjust. He say something and do another thing. I forgive you. Never mind. You can still go to heaven. It's okay. No. God is just. He is very, very just. I will mean what I say. So now, does everyone have to die? Yes. That's the judgment. But God so loves us that He has to do something in order to get us back to get back that joy, to get back that fun, to get back that relationship so that we can have a good time with Him. That is the reason why Jesus has to come because His soul loved us, that He would like to die in, before us. He would like to replace our death to His death so that when God the Father looks at Jesus, He doesn't seize you. He doesn't see you, he sees Jesus. And that's how reconciliation starts. That's why the Bible says in John 3, 16, the very famous verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And that's why the minute Adam and Eve sinned against God, rebelled against God, they were condemned. Condemnation were there. That's why they were afraid. They hid themselves from God because they knew that they had some, done something wrong. And here, God says, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Verse 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So you can see, God so loved us that he sent his only begotten Son to save us from the pit of hell. The only way to salvage us, the only way to save us is for Him to die. And one thing is very important. He, did, he didn't die just like that. He died and rose again on the third day. And that's where the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ can be stored upon us, upon us when we receive Him. Then now we can come to God the Father and say, God, Thank you for Jesus who reconciled to 
us to you. That is the thing. Now in Acts chapter 2, verse 23, the Bible says, This man, that is Jesus, was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross. He was talking about the Jewish people, the Jews who, 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 who hanged Jesus. So you can see it was planned. When, when these things had happened, God knows exactly what has happened. As I've said, He is not confined to space, time, and metal. He is outside creation. He can see the whole thing. Now, why did Jesus die? Well, we talk about it. It is because of Adam. Otherwise, he won't have to come down to earth and save us. If Adam did not do that thing, that is to eat of that fruit. Okay? That's the key that you must understand. That biblical theology, biblical understanding, that it is from Adam. So why did he die? Why did Jesus die? It is because of Adam. And secondly, God is just. He can't change his verdict. Someone must die and we all must die. In order to save us, someone must die and he must replace that penalty. But no one can except God himself. And he can die and be resurrected again. And from that power, given us life. So that's why the verdict is changed. Where now we can have a relationship with God the Father. That we can have uh, uh, this, this, this en en enjoyment of our fellowship. That's the plan. Okay, so God is very just. Someone must die. Who died? Jesus. Jesus died on behalf of you. He took your place. And that's why there's a plan. For the foreknowledge of God, He has a deliberate plan. That is, Jesus volunteered to die on behalf of the world to save us. Why? Because He was motivated by love. That's why the character of God is love. He loves you and me. So He was motivated. The second person God had, He loves us. He volunteered to come, motivated by love. And by doing so, that moves us to repentance. And we've repented of our sins. We've repented of what is actually happening to us, the deterioration of our body, the corruption of our body. We realize that we cannot live forever. We know that we are going to die. We know that one day we will be covered by the sand in the turn to sand or to soil. No choice. But the good news is, when we repent, we can be reunited with God. We can have fellowship with God. The people of God, you try to fit in the puzzle of your life. Is it happening now? When God put that judgment in chapter, th chapter 2, verse 17 of Genesis. Does it relate to you now? Do you appreciate more of what Jesus had done? Do you understand where God is coming from? Why Jesus had to die? You think of Him. Because it's, it's, it's so crucial that this God can do such a thing to love us to care for us, to save us from the pit of hell and to give us what He thinks is good for us. That is to fellowship with Him, enjoying the presence of God forever. This is the story of Jesus, of why He died. There are a lot of things that you can discuss in your group when you're going through the Alpha course. So I hope that today, as you learn a little bit more on what had happened, that you will really appreciate what God had done. Amen. So let us come together as we close, that we can remember Him, that, uh, that we can really have real fellowship with this living God.
that we believe in. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for opening up our eyes to see what is what has happened in the beginning. And now, Lord, we know a little bit more of your severity of, of the death penalty, why this is implemented. Because, Lord, you can't stand sin, but you can love us forever. So help us, Lord, to see and appreciate what Jesus Christ has done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to save us, to wash our sins away, and to be reunited and be reconciled to the Heavenly Father. So thank you, God. May you bless each and every one of us here. And that, Lord, we can really now, slowly but surely, enjoy our fellowship until we see you face to face. Amen. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strive to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. <laughs>